today I wanted to show you a couple examples of how I color grade my moody footage. But first, we need to get some moody footage. So let's go out super early in the morning and get some moody ass clips. super sketchy to climb because there's a thin layer of ice around the entire thing like this entire structure is just a big icicle so I have to be so careful going up and down the stairs not to slip and fall because that would be bad Alright, I think that'll conclude our moody shoot for today. Got way better photos than I expected, and now let's head on back home and show you how I edit these. Should I be wearing a raincoat for this? I mean, I know it's just an editing tutorial, but it's the moody editing tutorial, you know? So I want to start off with this as kind of a warm-up. This is kind of an easy Example, we got some greens, a little bit of red in the foreground, we get the headlights, but overall the lighting is very smooth, no skin tones to worry about, the fog is very gray. So the first step in this process is of course to color correct this footage, fix the white balance and the exposure. So I'm going to make sure my scopes are visible and then looking at the scopes for this shot, we can see that our white point is already touching that top limit 100 as it should be, but the bottom, the black point, is not quite at zero. So I'm gonna come over to Lumetri Color and drag down the blacks so that those pixels just begin to touch zero. And then we've brought back basically a lifelike amount of contrast into the shot. Next up, I'm gonna fix the white balance. This is super simple, just use the eyedropper and this fog in the back should be completely gray. So I'm just gonna click on a nice neutral spot of fog and that will make some slight adjustments to the white balance to make it look accurate. And finally, since I shot this in a flat log profile, I'm just gonna set the saturation to 130 to bring back some of that saturation that was toned down in camera. And as we can see, we've kind of made this image look, you know, lifelike. We've unlogified it, you could say. And now I'm gonna add a second Lumetri color effect to the clip and start grading. First off, using the tone curve. First, I'm going to create a point right in the middle of that curve. This ensures that when we darken the shadows, we're not gonna be, you know, completely messing up the highlights and just destroying the entire image like that. And then I'm just gonna jump into the shadows and start bringing these down to introduce some more contrast. Then we can scroll on down to our hue curves, starting out with the hue versus saturation curves. I'm going to use the eyedropper to select the color of the headlights because we don't want to be desaturating those warm tones. We want to keep those. And then to make sure that the fog in the background is completely gray, I'm just going to grab right around the blue and purple and just bring it all the way down to zero. And that's going to kill off any kind of residual blue or purple artifacts that we would have in the gray parts of the image and make it be true gray, essentially. Then since we have some greens in the foreground here as well, you guys know I like to go for some nice desaturated moody greens. So I'm gonna grab right around the yellows and start bringing that down to desaturate those greens. Then we can scroll on down to the hue versus hue curve and make some additional adjustments to really dial in the look. And since I completely desaturated the blue and purple, we don't need to worry about adjusting the hue of that area. It's not gonna do anything. So I'm gonna start 
by just marking off those colors so we just don't worry about them at all. And then I like to take these yellow and orange colors and push them up more towards red. You can see we've got a nice kind of deep red color coming in by making that change. And then finally, I'm gonna grab these green tones and move them more towards blue to create some color contrast and just go for a cool, kind of cooled off green vibe here. Might scroll up and desaturate those a little more as well. I will also mention it's a little tough to color grade and get the colors accurate with a giant studio light right in front of my face. I'm just gonna grab the remote for the light here. Yeah, yeah, okay, looks good. Another effect I like to use to make my images a little moodier is a nice gradient or two. So I'm gonna add another Lumetri color effect. And to create the gradient, I'm gonna use a rectangular mask. And what I want this gradient to do is darken the foreground in the bottom left of the image and this road on the right a little bit. So I'm gonna angle it a bit and position this mask over those areas, and then I'm gonna adjust the feather to smooth out the edge. Then come over to the Lumetri panel and bring the exposure down, and as you can see, we are darkening the hell out of that particular part of the image. That looks pretty nice. And I think I'll then do uh, the opposite effect in the top right, just to brighten up the sky. And as you can see, that's adding a nice little bit of extra punch uh, and vibrance to the clip. And then finally, one more Lumetri color effect to add a couple little details that I add to every single clip I grade. First of which is a nice teal tint in the shadows to add some color contrast. So I'm gonna come over to the red curve and take away a bit of red from the darkest parts of the image. And when we remove red, we're adding in kind of greenish blue teal color. Then. I'm gonna add one more tiny little detail, which is to use the Luma versus saturation curve and completely desaturate the black and white parts of the image. This just ensures that there's not any unrealistic color cast in the brightest and darkest parts of the image. And as you can see, we've got a nice moody grade going on here. We've got some nice color contrast between the reds and the greens, nice completely true gray in the background and a good amount of contrast between the sky and the dark foreground. Cool. Let's move on to a slightly trickier shot. This clip is a little trickier for a couple reasons. First of all, we have skin tones in the image. So we're gonna have to take that into account and make sure that we're not making those appear inaccurate. And also because this clip was shot at blue hour. So there is actually some blue light in the background. So that thing we did on the first shot where we just completely killed off all the blue, that's not gonna work here. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. First, we're gonna color correct exactly the same as we did on the first clip. Let's once again add another Lumetri color effect, jump into the curves and start adding some contrast, bringing the shadows down. And then moving on to the hue curves, the most important thing here is to start by marking off the skin tone, and we're not gonna touch that. We don't wanna mess up the skin tone. And as I said before, if we were to completely desaturate the blue, it just doesn't look natural because there is actually blue light in the image. So I'm gonna desaturate the blues maybe a tiny little bit uh, to bring down some of that cast in my jacket, but overall, I'm not gonna touch the blues too much. And we have a tiny little bit of green in the background so I'm gonna desaturate that a bit, but probably not gonna to make too much of a notable difference in the image. And next up, let's scroll on down to the hue versus hue curves. And what I'll do here that's a little different from the last shot because we have that blue kept in the image is mark off once again, the blue and purple areas and drag them up so that we push them closer to green. Then once again, I'm going to use the eyedropper to mark off the skin tone so we don't mess that up. And then I'm just gonna play around with these yellow and green tones, maybe cool them off a bit. And now let's adjust this skin tone. So I'm gonna open up HSL Secondary, which is an effect that I use to correct my skin tones. I made a separate video actually entirely about this effect, which you can watch by clicking right up here. But jumping into HSL Secondary, I'm gonna use the eyedropper to select my skin tone. 
then enable this color slash gray option so it shows everything we're selecting. Probably looks kind of creepy. And then I'll start using the sliders to dial in the selection. Uh, selecting all of the skin, but trying to select as little of the background as possible. Now that we've refined that selection as much as we can, I'm gonna bring the denoise up to smooth out the edges and then blur the selection out so we don't have harsh edges on that selection that'll mess with the shot. And as you can see, the selection isn't perfect because the leaves in the background are close enough to my skin tone that they're being selected as well, but that shouldn't be a huge issue for the final grade. To actually correct the skin tone, I'm gonna open up the three-way color wheels down here. And basically the rule here for an accurate skin tone is that you want to add the ambient lighting color into the highlights, red into the shadows, and then use the midtones to make the color of the skin accurate. So let's dive a little deeper into each one of those. So because skin is reflective, the highlights should reflect the ambient lighting. In this case, because it's blue hour and it's daylight, it's going to reflect the blue in the ambient environment. So I'm gonna add a bit of blue into the highlights. Next, we're gonna add some red into the shadows. This kind of reflects the color of like blood flow under the skin and makes your skin look a little more vibrant and lifelike. And finally, we're gonna use the midtones to correct the color of the skin. So I'm gonna first isolate my skin so we're not showing anything else in the shot. So I'm gonna use a mask on the clip and just position it over my face to isolate that color. And then I'm gonna look at this circular scope. This is the vector scope. It shows the colors of pixels in your image. And this line in the top left is called the flesh line. And it indicates the color that skin should be if it's accurate. As you can see here, it's actually pretty dang accurate, but I'm gonna push it a little bit more towards purple and red just so that it sits right on the right side of that line. Then we can delete the mask disable the color slash gray option so we can see what we've done to the shot. And you can see it's a subtle difference, but we're making that skin look a little bit more lifelike and realistic. Depending on the shot, since you're pumping a lot of extra color into the skin, it can also be good to bring down that saturation a little bit to compensate, and then to compensate for the loss of saturation to bring up the contrast. And then to draw the eye to the subject, which is me in the center of the image, I'm gonna add a little bit of a vignette feather it out a bit to just darken up those edges and draw the eye towards the center. And you could stop here, this looks good, but I wanna add a couple more subtle effects to draw the eye to the center more and stylize the image just a bit more. So I'm gonna use HSL Secondary once again to create some additional color contrast. To do this, I'm gonna copy that Lumetri color effect and then paste it back onto the shot and then disable everything except for that HSL secondary. Then I'm gonna come into the HSL secondary effect. I'm gonna invert the selection. So as you can see, we're selecting everything except the skin. Then I'm gonna blur the selection all the way out since we're gonna be making some more noticeable adjustments. I don't want it to look really weird around the edges of the skin. Then I'm gonna reset all of the effects that we used to correct the skin tone and do something completely different, which is to create some color contrast by adding blue and green into the background. So since we've selected everything except the skin, I can then use the sliders down here to push, obviously that looks like garbage, we're not gonna do it that much, but to push some different colors into the background and create some additional color contrast. And as you can see, we're just adding a bit of extra color contrast and drawing the eye to the skin tone in the middle. This is a technique I've been using a ton lately to go for these cooled off, moody looks. And then finally, we're gonna do the same thing we did to finish off the first shot, adding a teal tint into the shadows and desaturating the blacks and whites. And to speed things up, I'm just gonna take that effect from the previous clip, copy it, and paste it onto this one. Moment of truth. Yeah, yeah, looks solid. And that is going to just about do it for this one. I uh, wanted to go for something a little different, incorporating, you know, kind of the vlog and like shooting half of this video into the beginning so it's not just like a boring uh, editing tutorial. 
Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new from it, feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel and following me on Instagram. I've been posting quite a lot over there lately. But that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.